Welcome everyone to The Howl. I'm William Haynes, and in this episode I sat down with Danny, Owen, and Kyle to discuss how their offseason went surrounding golf, how their season is going in golf, and what their goals are for the rest of the season. Thanks for joining, and we hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, and welcome to The Howl. My name is William Haynes, and the producer of today's show is Jack Foster. And we are very excited to have Danny, Kyle, and Owen here in the Dispatch Podcast Studio, powered by Jets Pizza. Hey guys, can you please introduce yourself and how long you guys have been playing golf? Hi, I'm Danny. I've been playing golf for 13 years. Hi, I'm uh, Kyle. I'm a junior. Uh, I've probably been playing golf uh, since probably like three years old. I'm Owen. I'm also a junior, and I've been playing golf probably since about four or five years old. Okay. How's you guys off-season been? It's been pretty good. Um... We're in season right now, but it's it's been going pretty good. Uh, yeah, we ran uh, a few summer camps this year. Uh, our coach, Coach Dan Caparuso, uh, he's great with the summer camps. Um, keeps us involved out at Old Orchard. Um, yeah, we were all, all participating in that. Um, I think we were one of the most prepared teams in the MSL this year due to our preparation in the off season. Um, all of us play in the IJGA uh, independent circuit around Illinois. Uh, we stay competitive in uh, big events like the Illinois State Junior Amateur. Um, so we were all ready to compete um, coming into this high school season. Yeah, like Cal said, we played a lot of uh, summer independent tournaments away from Mercy, and we all had a lot of success there. And then uh, coming into the season, the team was very strong and continuing to have a lot of success. Okay, cool. How's your guys' season been so far? Been doing pretty good. 8-1 uh, and one as of right now. Yeah, uh, we've had a lot of big upsets. Uh, earlier last week, we upset Barrington at home. Yeah. Um, that We haven't done that much, and Barrington's a powerhouse team in the MSL. Um, and we did it by a few strokes. Uh, all of us here contributed. These two guys shot you in par rounds to help us out. Um, that was a big upset. We beat our rivals, Prospect, which is always nice. Yeah. Uh, beat Prospect and Meadows away at Arlington Lakes earlier uh, this week. And then yesterday, last night, we beat uh, Conan um, by a good eight strokes. At, uh, at their home course. Yep. On the road. Um, so, yeah, a uh, pretty big win, a uh, dominating win. And uh, we got two matches left um, that we should be pretty comfortable in. And uh, we're looking to finish the season uh, at the top of the leaderboard of the MSL um, coming into the conference tournament. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got... Uh, we got Hoffman States and Chalmers left at our home course, which we haven't lost at in over a year. So <laughs> we're feeling confident about those. And then uh, coming into the MSL tournament at uh, Arlington Lakes, we're looking to uh, take first and take the MSL title. Okay, cool. Is there like any like golf course that like you guys prefer to play at, or like? I mean, I really Old like. Orchard. I really like Old Orchard. Um, it is a nice course. Uh, it's generally well maintained. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like Owen said, we have a big home course manager at Old Orchard. Um, we all play there. I've been playing there since I was six or so years old. I know these guys have too. Um, we have a huge advantage when it comes there. Um, you saw we saw with being Barrington, we just out strategized them there and uh, dominated that course. I I'd, I'd probably say Old Orchard. Yeah. There's there's a big home field advantage. Old Orchard is it's a tough course and. Uh, even experienced teams that have a lot of good talent, you know, they struggle there, and we, we thrive, so. Yeah. Of course, okay, cool. Like, are your players different from this year than last year, or does it not really matter what players you have to be a successful team? Uh, I'd love to take this one. Um, I think our team is really special this year. I think it's really unique. Um, last year, uh, we lost a big piece in Chad Tromba. Uh, he's a senior leader who played on the varsity team. All, all of his four years at Hersey. Um, but I think uh, we've become closer as a team this year. Um, we don't rely on just one player. Um, all three of us here have contributed a lot, but then there's many guys on the team who have contributed almost even more than us sometimes who aren't here. Um, Henry Esposito, uh, Yuki Nishizaka, uh, Tucker Heminger came in big during the Barrington match. Um, Danny Kim has been working this offseason, grinding his butt off, uh, challenging us in practice. Um, Derek Mize has been an awesome teammate to help us out. Um, I think the depth on our team this year 
is like no other years before, and I think that's helped us win some matches that uh, maybe some of us, some people don't think we should. Uh, and I'd say we're relatively young. Um, Danny's mm -hmm. a senior. Uh, Yuki's a senior. Um, yeah, we only have what four seniors on our team. Yeah, only four seniors on the starting roster, um, and a sophomore in Henry Esposito. So yeah. we're a young team, but we're a strong, like unified team that prepares well and uh, is ready for big moments. So I think uh, the rely the ability to rely on each other is huge. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Danny Kim's a great player. Danny yeah. Kim is like very close to a scratch golfer, and he consistently puts up great scores. And you know, he still doesn't crack the starting lineup sometimes. So. Yeah. That kind of speaks to the testament of how good our team is. Okay, so like you guys say, like preparation comes into like a big part of this. How does that look for each player individually? So mainly, it's just a lot of prep time before we actually get to the course. I mean, we're working in eighteen birdies, planning out courses. Um, like what last week we did uh, Chevy Chase uh, eighteen birdies. Um, we were looking. Okay, where do we want to miss? Um, where can't we miss, um, just what clubs we want to be hitting off the tees. Uh, what do you guys think about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah just think, something uh, like that. Our head coach, Dan Caparuso, is an IHSA Hall of Fame head coach, and that's for a reason. He's been coaching for a really, really long time, and he knows the game, he knows the courses we play. Um, so he has given note sheets that he's compiled. Um, we all take have played a lot of practice rounds at different courses. We know how to take notes at courses. Uh, the main things we focus on when we're playing a practice round is where to tee. We like to tee on the other side of trouble. Where to miss, missing where to miss on greens, where to make sure you're not taking penalties, and uh, green complexes, how to chip. Um, that's mainly what we're looking for in preparation. And then we're also trying to prepare our minds. Uh, golf's a very mental game. Um, all of us have highs and lows, um, but we try to prepare ourselves and calm ourselves we all have different ways uh i sometimes like listening to music before i play um that kind of calms me um just kind of going through the same routine on a, on a range same potting routine just to kind of make keep everything consistent from course to course uh to stay mentally uh strong in it yeah as well as i'm not used to you know there's there's not too much that you could do to prepare other than you know just looking at the course and scouting it out but you know it really comes down to your execution game day so uh, that's the main key with this game. Yeah. So, Kyle, you said you like to listen to music. Like, what type of music? Um, <laughs> I have a wide range. Uh, I've gotten into country. I like I like a country song. Uh, it's kind of slow tempo. Kind of I like a calming song because I can sometimes be um, high energy or anxious. Um, so I like a slower song like that. Um, I also listen. I have my own worship music playlist. Um, I like tapping into that a little bit, um, hearing songs that uh, kind of call me and bring me closer to connections that I like to make uh, outside of the golf course. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I listen to. Yeah, so you guys all mentioned like stuff of like how to like miss on a court hole, how to like get closer to like the pin. Does like the field condition come into a part too? Absolutely. I mean. If the course is playing soft, obviously you're going to want to try to carry the ball a little farther, just not play as much run out versus like Arlington Lakes recently has been playing really hard. Um, and we needed everything to run about another 30 yards. I mean, Kyle, you had that shot on mm -hmm. seven yeah. during a... Yeah, so courses can really determine that. Uh, we played uh, po Bridge of Poplar Creek last night, which had really soft greens. We mm -hmm. were able to um, hit, a, hit our shots, carry them closer to the pin and uh, they were able to stop um, pretty fast, whereas Arlington Lakes, um, we, sometimes you might hit uh, a wedge which stops quicker, but that uh, at Arlington Lakes, it was fast and firm, it was running out. On uh, hole seven uh, at Arlington Lakes, I, had, uh, I hit a wedge that landed in front of the green to a back pin and rolled out over the green. Um, it's playing, so it's playing really fast. Um, but yeah, uh, We've played a lot of the courses in the MSL conference. Uh, we know how they tend to be. Uh, we never play a match at a court at an only course that we haven't played a practice run at. Mm -hmm. So we know what's playing. We check the weather, um, and then sometimes uh, if there's been heavy rain, um, courses might have water damage, standing water. Uh, there are rules in place that uh, the 
hosting coach will go over um, to avoid that water. Um, uh, we've played a lot of matches this year, raking plays in the bunkers where you, um, some of the bunkers because the public or rain haven't been uh, up to playing conditions, so you're allowed to pick your ball up, rake where the ball was, and place it back down to give yourself a better lie. Yeah, and you also can't control the weather, right? If it's windy, yeah. if it's rainy, if it's cold, everything can make golf harder. And uh, those conditions especially can really uh, enhance the game. So the state tournament, the reason why it's so highly touted and why it's so difficult to qualify is as you get later into September and into October, the conditions of golf just continue to intensify. So when you're at the sectional tournament trying to qualify for state, it may be 40 degrees, maybe 60 degrees. It could be 10 mile an hour winds, it could be 30. So uh, the conditions of golf course can vary so easily. Okay. So like, what does like practice look for you guys? Because I know you guys practice in the morning, right? Or like uh, we practice in the morning one time this year. Uh, oh. We host our tryouts yep. early in the morning during sunrise. Uh, uh, the, we had hosted it the two days before school, and then the one day after school we go after. Um, Percy is nice enough to help uh, all of us get scheduled mm -hmm. um, to work around uh, the daylight. Obviously, golf is a daylight dependent sport. Um, and so Hersey has been nice enough to help our schedules out um, for a long time, and we're able to uh, get on, on the golf course early um, after school, and we'll usually practice, um, practice starts around like 2 o'clock, 2.30ish. Uh, we'll either be playing nine holes at Old Orchard, working on some things, having our coach Dan Caparuso come out, check on our swings, work on short game stuff, or uh, if we have an upcoming big match at an away course, uh, we'll all transport ourselves there, uh, and we'll, we'll play practice round kind of like we described with checking uh, where to miss and stuff like that um, at around like that 2.30, 3 o'clock-ish time. Yeah, sometimes we'll play till dark as well. We get out there at 2.30-ish. Uh, yeah, we'll play till, what, about 7.30? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Five-hour practices are very common for us. Yeah. So it, another thing that speaks to a testament of how good our team is and how prepared we are to um, go deep into the season. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and, and speaking of the dark, uh, if you check the Hershey Golf Twitter, uh, a few players like Nishi Yuzaka, uh, we've, we've even played in the dark uh, with uh, glow in the dark golf balls, so uh, fun stuff like that. But yeah, we're, we're playing until the sun goes down. Okay, sick. So, like, for some of our viewers that don't know golf exactly, like, mm -hmm. can you guys explain it to them? Because, like, I don't know if anybody knows. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll. Yeah, you got it, you got it. Okay. I, I'd say golf is one of the best games uh, that is similar to life. Um, it's It looks so simple watching on TV, um, but I would encourage any of your viewers who uh, may not have played golf uh, to go try it, um, figure it out. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's I'd, uh, people have said it's like 90% 90 mental, 10% actual game, and I'd say it's pretty close to that. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs, and on a giant grassy field uh, where you're trying to hit a ball from 400 yards away, you're trying to get into a small tiny cup from, uh, in four or less shots, uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in between that. Uh, but the biggest thing is staying mentally sound, because in a golf swing, um, when you're taking it back and following through, uh, there's about... 10,000 different things that can go right or wrong. So timing them all up to get them all right is difficult. And But uh, the four hour, sometimes two hour in our night home matches, uh, stretch of trying to stay mentally even um, and calm, uh, that's, that would I say would, would be the biggest battle of golf. Yeah, it's the mental side of it. Yeah, I mean, who said the, that quote, uh, it's the six inches between your ears that determines how a round of golf goes? Yeah. So you guys all mentioned something about staying mental, especially Kyle, but like when you guys have like a bad shot, how do you guys like come back from that? So, I mean, I kind of, as soon as I put that club back in the bag, um, I just completely say, okay, I can't do anything about that. Let's move on. Let's get to the next shot. Let's see what we can do about that one. Uh, I mean, again, just knowing that, hey, you do have another shot coming up, that you need to prepare yourself and know what you're going to do on that is really just a big, big part of it.
Cat preaches like uh, breathing practices and you know, mental practices that can really help with getting over difficult shots or um, even difficult rounds. You know, maintaining confidence is one of the biggest keys for the sport, and having that mental space that you can just go to in an important round or important shot it's, it's so key. Yeah, I like what Owen said about confidence. I think maintaining confidence and all of us has hit through through practice. We've all hit millions of golf shots. Uh, we know we can pull off almost every shot on the course because uh, we prepared it. So knowing that no matter where your tiny little white golf ball ends up on the big grassy field, knowing that you can get it back to where you want it, um, and remembering that uh, even if you didn't get it to the spot you wanted on your last one is huge. And a uh, big thing I learned from Nick Hardy, a uh, former uh, Illinois junior player, uh, he played over in Northbrook, um, now plays in the PGA Tour. Uh, he said um, he only gives himself five seconds to get upset at himself. Because we're all human, we all get upset at ourselves. People who say that they can't get upset at themselves, just that's not realistic. But he only gives himself five seconds, and then it's time for the next shot. Um, if you let it last longer than five seconds, it's gonna affect the next one. So you gotta just keep moving after, after that time. Okay, sick. Uh, so, any important matches coming up? Yeah, I mean, we have conference next week, thir or this, yeah, this coming week, Thursday, and then regionals after that, and then hopefully as a team we make it out of there. Um, I think we should, and then from there we got sectionals. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. We got, so as Owen alluded to earlier, uh, we got Schaumburg and Hoffman Estates coming up. Um, we want to take care of that, uh, our business at home course, and then move into conference is uh, possibly the first or second ranked team in the MSL, and take care of business there. Yeah, our, our really, really big matches in Barrington, Conan, Prospect, Friend, those are all done. We went three and one of those. Great season. But postseason is coming up, and that's, you know, really where you get to shine and get to prove yourself amongst the, the best in the state. Okay, well, that's it for today's show. Thanks, Danny, Kyle, and Owen, and thanks to Jack Foster for producing today's show. Also, a thanks to our sponsor, Jets Pizza, right over there on Rand Road. I'm William Haynes, and on behalf of Jack Foster, thanks again, and see you next episode.